All right, here we go. Episode 85, No Laugh Track Podcast. Thanks to the guys in Circle of Heat for letting us play the music, as always. Great stuff to uh, set the mood there. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Back from episode 41. We are now on episode 85. Wow. Yes. Josh well, we Weinstein, didn't kill Chris show Bliss. the first time around, and we're getting another whack at it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You're back. We're back. 40. It, uh, yeah, 44, uh, 43 in between, and we're still strong. Like, we're strong as relative, I guess. Well, it's but a podcast. Uh, How strong does it have to be? To it's, exist? It, it yeah. still exists. Right. To meet expenses. <laughs> if, you, if, yes, if you look it up online, you'll still find it. So, guys. Hi. Great to see both of you. Good, Good to see you, man. After, uh, you know, a little less than a year, I guess, it's been. Oh, so much has changed, though. Mm. Oh, oh. Mm. Okay, not much. Middle East peace. There's Middle East peace now. That's Did you hear about that? Did that so, was that breaking this yeah, morning? Because I uh, and, uh, I took a nap. That was uh, just came across on my Twitter feed. <laughs> it's trending. <laughs> trending. Yeah. Peace is trending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we needed to dedicate the show to a celebrity that passed away uh, in the last couple days. Now, not the one you're thinking of. I'm talking Richard Bull. Richard Mall died. No, Bull. Oh, Richard Bull. Do you know who that is? I don't. The guy from Night Court? No, that's oh. Richard Mall. That's, that's Richard Mall. This is Richard. <laughs> Did I complete that in a circle of. <laughs> no, very close, though. Richard Bull. Nels Olsen from Little oh, House right. on the Prairie. Yeah. Yes. But he lived a long, healthy. 89 yes. for that guy. That clean prairie living. And as someone from Minnesota, I'm sure you must have watched that show like I did. And I like, hated that show when I was a kid. Did you? <laughs> did you? Uh, yeah. I was, I, I, like, we would go, I remember going to my friend's house, my friend Craig's house, and we'd watch, you know, we'd, Tuesday night we'd always watch, like, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Three's Company. Uh-huh. But there was one night, I don't even remember what night it was on, where they would watch Little House on the Prairie, and I just could not roll with that. I, just, I would have to go home. I just hated that show. When I See, now I grew up on The Rifleman, so... You know, just, and that was cool. Yeah. You know, the guy. I think that's how many bullets you should be allowed to have in any automatic weapon, the amount that he shoots off in the opening sequence. How many is that? The limit. I don't know. It's like eight or ten, oh. something like that. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. If you have any septuagenarians out there, call in. <laughs> wow. You know, you've been using a lot of big words ever since you became a mononephrotic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm sorry. Mononephrotic means one kidney. Oh. Yes. Yep. One yeah. One kidney. <laughs> We're going to get to that. Okay. Right. We're going to get just, to that. I'm just being a Someone here player. has one kidney. That's right. Yeah. And I am not a septuagenarian, but thanks very much <laughs> no. for rushing the calendar on that. <laughs> I wasn't saying you were. I was just saying, you know, the people in Chuck Connors' camp. <laughs> might, yeah, that's might true. Might skew even older than you. That's true. It was black and white after all, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I had a black and white childhood. So, uh, how was last night? It was fun. It was great. Yeah, yeah. It was insiders' night. The place was totally packed. Yeah, yeah. They were both. Uh, One couple went out to get a smoke, and we were never seen again. I think the cold got. Oh, they're still out there. I we're not that's sure. We be- they walked out. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think something happened to really them. Long I think so, I really. I think something <laughs> happened to them. I really do. I think now, the cold got. <clears throat> Let's go over how people, you guys uh, do the uh, kind of like stay up on stage, so like last time? Yeah. Stay up on stage together. No one's leaving. That's while right. the other one's uh, performing. It's the two of us on stage the whole show, um, though we are not a comedy team. You know, we each have our own material, and we both will interject into one another's, you know. Stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness. Interject into my st- Hey, are you interjecting into my stream? Stop <laughs> that. Cut it out. Ew. <laughs> um, don't splash. <laughs> That's right. Um, so he, you know, so it's yeah, it's 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 a tag team format. Yeah, sort of. there's kind of a handoff. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the handoff goes one of two ways. You dig your way to total silence halfway to China, and you go, "Hey, take it." I'm obviously going nowhere, or you absolutely kill and you pass the right. heat to the next guy. And either way, it's it, it's a it's a win for the next guy. Right, he's either yeah. getting momentum or or, get, you know, or giving these people a break. <laughs> right. Well, let's point. You're either a hero for saving them from the last yeah. guy. <laughs> so stru- I, it's structurally or, sound, or they're so, on a platter. Right? That's yeah. how I used to try and get girls in college. Is when the uh, the guy that was boring the shit out of uh, the girl, that's what I'd be like, in. hey, you know, let, <laughs> I'll save you. We'll get rid of this guy. I'll start a conversation with you. Right. Yes. Uh, so who? Let's blame someone. Who was uh, who was performing when the couple walked out last night and never came back? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh my god! Hey, there's professionals. Hey, they right. might. You know, they might have run on their check too. I mean, I looked. You got a good look at that. I mean, that couple was. You know. Yeah. 
Remember them? I do I remember, remember they were they were right uh, stage mm-hmm. left. They were getting a little frisky and loopy too. They might have oh, just, yeah, they might have, yeah, they they might have just decided that, they, that they'd gotten what they came here exactly. for. Exactly. <laughs> and since it was Insiders Night, they had no investment to no protect. Yeah. Are you, you guys are fluffing the crowd. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you know, what, you know. I can't just. I know it's a podcast, but if you look at us, I mean, how can you? How can you not feel the sexy? Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, just the general, you know, just the endorphin thing. Yeah, just yeah. that alone. That's right. Uh, Verbal I, fluffers. Yeah, if, la- if laughter wasn't an aphrodisiac, I would never have gotten laid. So. <laughs> That's true. No kidding. First thing you like to see, a man, is sense of humor. Well. <laughs> That's I'm your, that I, list. That I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, item two isn't that uh, high a bar. <laughs> All I'm looking for. Uh, so this is the first time working again together since last time. Yeah, well. we only do the show here. It's only here. Yeah, yeah. And really, it's just a way for Chris and I, who are very old dear friends, to hang out for a week once a year. And yeah, and, and it's, it's a safe way for me to always dump a whole bunch of new material on the crowd. And then when I hit, you know, shitberg. <laughs> Hand it off to Chris. <laughs> Cinematic Titanic done. Yes, it is. Speaking about hitting a shitberg. That's right. Yeah. Yes, we had our final show in Philadelphia uh, right around New Year's. Sad. Yeah, I don't know if it's sad. I mean, I'm, it's, it, it was. I. I. I uh, I'm proud it was of it. A, it was. A, it was a successful thing. You know. Yeah, Huge. I'm. I'm really proud of it. Good piece I'm of work. Really glad we did it. I loved the, doing the shows and the DVDs. But you know, we we became five people in five cities and just it just became too hard to have it grow you know it, we the i think we could i think sucks. we could have kept you know we could have kept doing shows sort of indefinitely but creatively it would have just it, it wouldn't have been a growing concern you know? so when you were getting together so you were actually like physically getting together to write for that no or? we would have write remotely so oh everyone, you would the whole time would, yeah 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 so i mean at the very beginning when when two more people lived in LA with me we would get together in, yeah. in one place but after that the last five years basically it's we all write separately and then you know yeah because Josh them, slowly the drove the others out of Los Angeles right. <laughs> town's not big enough for everybody that's right uh, but the uh, it's still stuff still available on yeah the uh, DVDs are available on Amazon the most of the episodes are seeable on Hulu and Amazon Plus as well oh on the uh, oh, that's cool or, oh really yeah they're on Amazon yeah at least several of them are I know a lot of the mystery science stuff is on there now yeah like that cat that library seems to be growing did you ever get to see the show yeah yeah we talked about that last time was I did it was, it was the one at the yeah. uh, state theater oh, that was early so on, it was yeah. one of the early ones yeah, yes. that was a good one. yeah and it was fantastic and I saw nice. it out in uh, in Mesa Arizona and uh, boy it was a good show thanks yeah I, you know I think I think it's very likely that at least you know a, a lot of us will reconvene and do another show. You have well, to probably not. At some point. Probably not as as you know purely riff based a show, uh, but I think it's very likely. Well, you know we all we all like each other and we all love performing. So. Yeah, and there's a lot of comedy talent there. Yeah. What uh, does anybody that in that group have something big they have got lined up right now? You know, like uh, is Joel moving on to doing a. No, Joel's doing his one-man show, which is called Riffing Myself, and it's really about the creation of MST, Mystery Science Theater, yeah. uh, and his background that sort of led up to it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think he, you know, I think he's, Joel's very interested in, in keeping the MST name and brand alive, and, you know, and I think that that's kind of what he's going to settle in and do is champion that, you know, champion that, and I think we all have other stuff we want to do in addition and so you got me uh in a weird way you got me two new facebook friends the other day oh yeah yeah because i uh my girlfriend wanted to mix up some of the pictures we have up at the house yeah and i have an old tom servo poster that oh, i got yeah. at one of the at the convention mystery science thing they did in minneapolis the convention o'connor yeah yeah <laughs> yes yes it a really long name yeah. electric boogaloo <laughs> uh Boy, that was in the 90s at some point, I think. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, I bought a Tom Servo poster. I put it up on the wall. She took a picture of it, put it on Facebook, and said, this is what Justin considers art. <laughs> and two of her friends on Facebook liked it and commented, and then uh, the next day sent me friend requests. Like, nice. Oh, we have something All in common. Right. Now I like her boyfriend. Yes. Oh. So you are you are a degree of separation now, All of Tom Servo all by himself. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I say hi. I, when I walk by, I say hi to you, not Tom, Tom Servo. Good. Excellent. 
Olympics, you guys pumped for that? Could you care less? Uh, I, I, I probably could care less, but mm-hmm. it's hard to feel how much less I could care. <laughs> I couldn't. I can't top that sentiment, or bottom <laughs> it, whichever one it is. Yeah, I, I for whatever reason. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing. You know, I'm sure I'll. I'll I'm sure I'll get sucked into like some story, a luge, <laughs> luge meet or something along the way. Or when they start flying off the uh, end and then close down the track. I just what I don't want is the, is the people who pretend they're interested in curling when the Winter Olympics come along. You know, because it's like this. It's like. It's like people who bowl ironically. It's like that same sort of, I love curling. I'm so into this. You know, it's like, no, you don't. It's <laughs> dumb. This is not a sport. And Sweeping. Just, ice sweeping. It's sweeping. <laughs> I always thought they should combine curling with ice fishing. Just make it one sport. So at least you had that hole to shoot for. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's gone. We win. Let's go. And it, it could be like, yeah, kind of like golf where it just could teeter on the, uh, right. on the edge. Does it land on a fish when it goes in? It might. It might. Then the fish floats up through the hole and... You have dinner. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Hey, I was uh, looking at your um, Twitter, Josh. Yeah. You had a picture of uh, some sort of award or some sort of certificate. What would you call it? Uh, it was top, top written a list of one hundred uh, best written TV series. It was a Writers okay. Guild of America did a some sort of I don't know how they compiled it exactly. But and you freaks, got recognition. Freaks and Geeks, yeah, Freaks and Geeks was listed as one of the. Uh, Top 101 shows of all time. Or best pretty, written shows of all time, I that's guess. That's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it was cool. I saw it was... Uh, and geeking cool. It's both. It's yes. freaking and geeking it's cool. It's geeking cool. It's <laughs> freaking and geeking. Uh, 60th tied with... I don't know. I looked at the list. Did you? I, I didn't. <laughs> I just got my little certificate. In the <laughs> Moonlighting. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, Is that worthy? company, I think. Worthy? Yeah. 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 I think so. At least they, were, they lasted more than a season, unlike Freaks and Geeks, so... <laughs> That's all right. That's not what the, that's was, not what the was, recognition was for. Was not for longevity. Bruce Willis was known as it was before he was known as, as like a giant cock, which apparently he is now. But I just get like the last couple of years. It's like all I hear is Bruce Willis is a giant dick story. Oh, well, apparently Kevin Smith doesn't like him too much. Yeah, you've heard that one. I th- I th- yeah, he, I also be, heard yeah. that he had a giant cock. So maybe the one took over that. the other. It's always possible. Well, I know. Uh, did you guys watch the Super Bowl? Yes. Did you see the Bruce Willis commercial? The hug thing? Yeah. We, yeah, with Fred. Yeah. Uh, when he, It starts off and he's saying, well, it's a wonderful game or a very competitive game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is already this is a over. great game. It's <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> You'd think by now they'd know to shoot that both ways. Remember but. when they did that in The Simpsons where they had the post-Simpsons uh, episode and uh, it was like the Broncos and someone and the character in the show, they wrote it in so his hand was covering up his mouth. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so you couldn't, there was no lip reading and they could just add it in later. Congratulations to the Broncos. All right. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I, um, you know, number one on that list, by the way, was Sopranos. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, They're top ten. Yeah. yeah. Hard to argue with Hard that. Hard to say what was better than that. Who else was way up at the top? Uh, Seinfeld was way up there. Yeah. I um, think it's, uh, All in the Family. Worthy. Worthy. Mm, Little House in the Prairie. No. No, it wasn't. Was <laughs> was it on there? It was bottom 60th. <laughs> yeah. You know Mystery Science Theater's not on there because it wasn't a Writer's Guild show. There you uh, go. There was no way that was going to make the list. Oh, what, why? What's the explain? It's that a scab show, thing. is what he's trying to say. Yeah, the Mystery Science Theater was a non-union. non-union. Uh, the Writers Guild is the Writers Union. So even when it goes to like Comedy Central and all that, it doesn't. That doesn't. You know, when it, I understand when you know somebody's starting out their own, putting it on. Yeah, no, there was not. It was not. There was nothing union about it oh. at any time during its uh, tenure run. Will there be another big show? Like- Which is why there's no residuals attached to it for <laughs> any of the shows I ever did. Seriously? Yeah, no, I've never made a dime off of Mystery Science Theater since I left. Who makes that? Do you want, can you uh, Jim you- Mallon. Uh, the owner, somehow. The owner. He ended up the owner once Hodgson left the show. He ended up owning the trademark and the show. Um, Joel, you know, there, there's, there are guys who make, who make some money, but Jim and Joel are the main beneficiaries. No kidding. So yeah. all that, uh, like the reissues or the uh, like the DVD releases and the throwing it up on yeah, I get uh, nothing from Amazon. Them. They'll pay. They'll pay me to interview me for the DVD extras. But other than that, I don't get any. I don't. I don't, don't get any payment. And interestingly enough, I wasn't a part of the show, and I also don't get residuals. You you, 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 you so don't either. You no, me neither. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're on par that way. That's right. <laughs> it's not fair, Chris. 
I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel so bad because he's not getting them either. Yeah. Um, did you guys see this? Uh, actually, I want to ask you one more thing. I saw on your Twitter. Yeah. Uncredited bass player. There's a picture of you with. Is that Justin Timberlake? That is me and Justin. Are you Timberlake in that movie? In the movie Bad Teacher. Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, it happened because Gruber, Dave Gruber Allen, was also in that movie. Um, and the director of that movie uh, directed both my episodes of Freaks and Geeks. And uh, so when that scene was in the script and Gruber, who had a part throughout the movie, just went up to Jake Kazan, the director, and said, Hey, let's get these guys. for It was him and our, my, our other friend Tom Chan. That's too cool. Um, let's get these guys for the band. And Jake was quite up for it because he liked me already you know, so so you've worked could, with timberlake i did work with timberlake for wow a day of rehearsal and a day of shooting <laughs> how was he he was awesome actually yeah. he was really a very cool guy he you know couldn't have been nicer couldn't have been more accommodating to the process and you know seemingly happy to be there and I, I give him credit i don't know how you guys felt but you know when he was a little boy band singer you know you kind of roll your eyes yeah but I actually respect that guy. He's, I do too. He's, he's a good I mean, entertainer. He has done. He has done a lot of interesting work. Yeah, he's very. He's a very funny comic actor. He's done yep. great work on SNL and stuff and Fallon's thing. And mostly, he was just a really fucking nice guy. And I was really happy that that, comes that was the too. case. That it wasn't. There just there wasn't a crack in the facade. It wasn't just a. a it was clearly not a guy. You know, just trying to. You know, with trying to. Whole tamp down his bastardness, you know, to get along. It was clearly right, right. This is clearly a nice guy. You know? And there, and uh, is there an actual TV version of that movie? I thought there was a pilot at least. There, there was a pilot order. I don't know if it's going to actually become a series. But yeah, there was. A, if there was, I missed uh, it. I, I, it didn't. There wasn't one that there happened. Was, there was. I think one. there might be one in the pipeline. I see. I see. So yeah, it was fun. That's the first time I'd ever been in a in a feature film. So did was, you go see it in the theater? I did, of course. Oh, sure. yeah, too. But uh, it was it was fun and it was fun to you know be on share the screen with Justin Timberlake too and share a mic with him. In fact, doing is there any vocals. chance you'll get the you'll get a best uh, 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 bass extra musician uh, nom? Tomorrow? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, hope is, so. is that award out that there? Was, it, that was the thing because they they hired me as a musician instead of an oh, actor. That's interesting. So it wasn't a it wasn't a SAG gig. It was a musician's gig. That's interesting. That's cool. That yeah. makes it even cooler. Yeah, crazy. So it was actually us playing in the scene. That is fucking so. cool. Same residual checks from Mystery Science as a uh, yeah, bad about, teacher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Within single digits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I believe that. Um, Some people fun. work for the love of it. How about you? Not intentionally, but <laughs> it just turns out that way. Yeah. What did you start telling people that? Yeah, me? I, um well, you know, I did reach a point, and you feel good when you reach this point. I mean, I, I uh, where I got to the point where it was like, I will do uh, a crap gig for great money. Mm -hmm. And I will do a great gig for crap money, but no more crap gigs for crap money. And that's like a really, I mean, that's a threshold that you... And oh, I you bet, get, yeah. Right. Yeah. So at least that, that part's, uh, you know, uh, for the love of it. So how much are you working right now, Chris? I mean, almost not at all. Almost no, not because, at all? You know, it's, they're all crap gigs. For, no, I'm like... <laughs> What have you been uh, I, doing? I, I, I'm in a different... Uh, my things move more slowly. There's monument projects. They're slow moving. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I definitely and, want to uh, talk about that. And, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. It's very weird. It's like art projects only. I've, I'm, and I've never been s super productive. Yeah. Uh, you, you know me. I, you know, I'm just a... Well, I don't know what the animal that gestates the longest is, but I've got them beat. <laughs> You're a hand wringer. Yes. You do a lot of hand wringing. Uh, not not as much as I used to, but uh, but had the habit of you know postponing things. Yeah, but he did. I mean, to your credit, you also got a Bill of Rights monument built on the I Arizona Capitol yeah. grounds. You know, you got this and, multi million dollar piece of stone sculpture built, and you're a comic. So you did, you did pretty yeah. good. And I got a front, and I got a New York Times article that says comic uh, builds m Bill of Rights monument. I thought that's pretty cool. And yeah, especially since it didn't say juggler built. No. <laughs> that's true. That's true. No kidding. Yeah, I managed to. Yeah, I finally managed to bury that lead. That's right. Rock and roll juggler. Yeah, that's true. So, that's right. so, uh, but I don't. I mean, I, I'm never. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. You know, I don't miss. Uh, this is the only club gig that that I do. Almost, I think it's. I do comedy and magic every once in a while. But, yeah. but uh, you're living in L.A. too. Uh, no, I live in Austin, Texas. Now. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, I mean. 
I think I think I'd rather just sit down and try and do what you've been doing all these years. You can have the stage. I want to sit and write. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and get good and get as good at that as you are. And uh, you know, good luck with that, my <laughs> friend. Well, not as funny. <laughs> just, uh, as good just takes in my practice, huh? As good in my own way. <laughs> you know, I mean, just because he's quantity and quality. Yeah. You know, I just bore easily. <laughs> do you think so? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. It's I guaranteed. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. That's why I've. Uh, Partly why I've had so many TV writing jobs is that I uh... my I totally impressed my uh, seven year old daughter a few months ago. She has found America's Funniest Home Videos on <laughs> Netflix, yes. and your name came through on the credits at the end. Nice. And I was like, "Well, wait, pause." I was like, "Sweetie, I know him." And I t- took some explaining to under- to get a seven year old to understand <laughs> writing those writing right. on a show with but people. But that's not the funny part, Daddy. <laughs> he got hit in the balls. Well, that's the funny part. The pain is the funny part, Daddy. Uh-huh. It kind of writes itself, Daddy. <laughs> That'd be really funny. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? He- <laughs> yeah. She was very impressed. Oh, good. She was very impressed good. that I knew someone who uh, has a credit on television. That's uh, that's always a good sort of cleanup credit for the people who don't know my far more esoteric <laughs> work. I can always. How about funny America's, America's funny some videos? That's right. Well, uh, but I would have to say, you know, just even conceptually, but then having actually seen it, the. Uh, Baby projectile vomit 1812 overture piece is, is a masterpiece. That was one of my best pieces of television yeah. ever. In fact, that, so. that, that actually helped me get the job on Freaks and Geeks. So that was so, Joe, one of Judd Apatow's favorite things. It in is the world just su- such a funny idea and so well. I mean, and, I mean, such a, you know, so my hat uh, goes off to you. Oh, and thank gets you. gets filled with vomit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so. Did you guys see the uh, Missouri is a. Uh, they have a new piece of legislation. They want to propose a uh, state official greeting. Oh, yeah, the high five. The high five. Wow. Let's talk about that. Wow. Really? I, I mean, obviously, it's just, you know, some someone's stunt to uh, get some press, but... Can you think of it? Any other states come to mind? That you think a state a, greeting? Yeah, a state greeting for any other states. Uh, I think doesn't Jersey have the, uh, the crotch clutch and the... <laughs> And uh, 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 eight or twelve states actually uh, have a, a knuckle drag. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, in they, the south, it's a low five kind of thing. You know, right. I want to start the Minnesota State greeting, which would just be "Hi." That's it. <laughs> that's all it has to be, really. Hey, that how's works. it going? Mm-hmm. That may that's maybe that's it. How's it going? The official Minnesota State greeting. So it's the show me high five state, mm-hmm. Missouri. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Show me wasn't bland enough. They, they said, give me a show me of the 21st century. High five. Because show me was in the 20th century and it was from like the 18th century. So right. now they're doing something. No the one knows what it means anymore. Exactly. Show me is too bossy. Uh, no, don't knows. mess with Texas is too bossy. <laughs> That's true. That's right. Or live free or die. That's another good one. And I like that. I like the multiple choice nature of the motto, but still. <laughs> a, live free. <laughs> B, <laughs> die. I C. Let's see how the night goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jay Leno. You know Jay Leno. You were on his show a few oh, times. Yeah, you were on his show, weren't you? Yes. I love when you do the voice. <laughs> so I want to talk about Jay Leno. This is last week. They're forcing That's me correct. out of here. They're forcing me I mean, I'd love to stay on, but uh, they've got this young kid, and I understand. <laughs> I, I get it. It's fine. Uh, today's Wednesday, so let's see. Tonight, uh, tomorrow, he has two shows left. I got two shows left. That's it. I got Billy Crystal on tomorrow night. <laughs> I, so was that a sort of Archie Bunker day line on there? <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. There was, I knew there was, it was a hybrid yeah, going yeah, on there. Uh, hey there, Stifle. <laughs> meathead. <laughs> stifle, Meathead. <laughs> That's funny. Did, did you see they did a, uh, someone put, the, they counted the amount of jokes he I did, and it was made. OJ and Clinton were his two main yes. targets. Uh, uh, the ongoing Tonight Show host made 4,607 jokes at Bill Clinton's expense. Wow. Uh, his first one came May 25, 1992. I wonder if Clinton gets uh, residuals on those. <laughs> his first one came when? May 25, 1992. Okay, so during that election, during his yep. first election. He's, uh, he says Clinton's not, he, not only is he more, a thousand, he's more than 1,000 jokes ahead of the runner-up, which is... OJ. No. 
George W. Oh, I suppose. Okay, I thought I thought that's I, true. Eight years is eight years is a lot more than you're gonna than one incident. So if you got a president for eight years, they're gonna they're gonna be up there. Yeah, uh, he's the top ten. Also included Hillary. But Jay Clinton. also does more jokes than anyone too. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about last time you were on a you were on the Tonight Show. I haven't been on the Tonight Show in uh, well, jeez. It's been. We'll have you back soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in in March. Well, I, yeah. That's. I mean. Um, it's funny. I talked to Leno twice that I remember talking to him like over the phone about something. And once was he, uh, uh, he was in Las Vegas doing whatever he was doing and I was in Las Vegas doing whatever significantly less remunerative thing I was doing. And Leno called me and I, I forget why and uh, and uh, was talking to him and I was, uh, uh, you know, to, about how hard he works. He goes, well, you know, I want to have um, something to fall back on. Stand up. And this is like 1996, uh, you know, yeah. and I was and I started laughing and I said, uh, Jay, how far are you planning to fall? You know? <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, I mean, that's a long, long ways. And he goes, well, you never. I was always a stand up. I want to be a stand up. You know, I'll always be a stand up. Well, he's first. always taking so much pride. I've never spent a dime of yeah. the Tonight Show money. And then I t- and then I said to him, well, if it gets really bad, you can start to sell off the the cars, which might not, you know, and he said that, and he said that would be moving backwards. It's like he'd actually, right. you know, I mean, that's, you know. Well, they say W.C. Fields, who started as a juggler, juggled every day for the rest of his life because he was so paranoid that he would have to go back to it. Wow, really? Yeah, but wow. he also, like, Left had bank had accounts, bank all, accounts over the, all over the country and had a, a had dozen an attic different full names of, and an attic full of booze in case prohibition came back too. So he was yeah. a paranoid dude. I but. mean, he was literally clinically yeah yeah out. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, the other time I talked to him was when uh, I, after I stopped doing the show, they changed talent coordinators and stopped doing the show, and it was like, uh, it was and it was just like, oh, this is just you know. The nonsense about it and he called me because he heard I'd been grousing about it because he's well known for wanting everybody to like Jay him. called you? Yeah, Jay called me and uh, uh, said uh, I should I hope nobody listens to this pod. I, I still want to re- <laughs> but, but it was funny Yeah, go ahead no, yeah. no, There's only two more days that I can hurt you <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, but I <laughs> might I need him for, I might need him for a non-profit event That's what I'm thinking It's like, you know uh, and I'd like to thank Jay for putting me on the Tonight Show all those times because without him I wouldn't even have any of these Tonight Show credits. Uh, but um, uh, he said, "Well, uh, you know, I stopped doing the show for eight years at one point in his career." He said, "I went eight years between Tonight Shows, so maybe you'll be the next host." <laughs> and it was like, and in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, use that line on anybody but me. I mean, honestly, that's a little that's a little too transparent for me as a oh, line. Yeah. You know, but I had to be polite, so I just left it as it wasn't even subtext. I yeah. managed to bury, you know, keep it out until now. It's finally risen to the top. It, it's hard. It is hard. Just I mean, I, I I actually am interested to see what his stand up becomes again once he's out of the Tonight Show spot. Because I mean, he was he was a great stand up, fucking best. Yeah, yeah he well, really, yeah. really he was. was really a great stand up. Yeah. I, lo- I loved him. You know, and I, yeah. I when I first moved out here or out to L A from here. 22 years ago I remember uh, Jeff Cesario sort of played host to me and uh, I had gone out there like J- Jeff had flown me out there to write a thing with him a couple months before I moved and he took me to Leno's house that night you know one of the nights and it was like it was such a thrill you know I, yeah. was, I was 20 years old and it was just like I'm sitting at Leno's house hanging you know hanging. well his stuff I mean when, and, and, I mean, ironically of course but when he'd go on Leno you, you just wanted I mean when he'd go on Letterman you wanted to watch it it was funny yeah uh, you know, start yeah, to finish funny. What's my beef? I'll tell you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can't remember any of the material, but I remember that he was really, I mean, really, the jo- they were great jokes. Yeah, he was, he was really and great. And lots I, of I wonder if he'll I go was back. so excited because I actually, the thing I remember about that thing is I had just written a joke for Dennis Miller for the Emmys. And Jeff, when we walked in, Jeff was like, oh, Josh just wrote uh, a joke for the monologue for the Emmys. And he was like, hey, what's junk? And Jeff told him, he's like, oh, great joke. Very cool. I wonder if he'll go back to acting now. God, uh, did he? Was he ever? Re- could you ever say that he achieved acting in any of his he did movie a movie roles? With, oh um, no, he, he was in movies, yeah. but no, did no, he you achieve can't acting? actually say that. Yeah. But yeah, well, he had a great line about. He was that, an Americathon. Though. 
Uh, what? A, what is that? It was about like 1979 movie about the gas crisis. You know, it was like an extension of the gas crisis that things were so bad in America that they had to do a telethon to keep America solvent. And he was he was in the he was in there uh, fighting boxing with his mother. Oh boy! Like not his actual right, mother, right. but that was his. I'm role thinking of the movie he did with Pat Morita. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember like. Psst. Speed Zone or something like you know <laughs> Crash well, John, Course. John or, Stewart's done some painfully bad film work. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's you know it's good when those guys give up on trying. You know, uh, you know it's like Louis Anderson was another guy who was like just couldn't act. You know, or he would have he would have gotten lots of roles. What do you mean in coming to America? Does anybody do a better job of? Uh... No one does a better job than Louis in that movie. <laughs> They're going to bring them back together. I don't know why. Suddenly I've become like <laughs> the, become. the Maurice LaMarche. <laughs> Is that a famous pocket. impressionist? Yes. Yes. Not a very famous impressionist because you had to ask, but. Well, but that I doesn't mean. Yeah, I mean, that's like Rich I, I, Little. I just, what was I? <laughs> I'm displaying. No, you had to go for a reference. You had to at least dress it up. That's right. You know. What, I do, was you, what do you guys thinking. think about Jimmy uh, Fallon taking over that big show? You know, he bugs me because he's such a kiss ass but i do think he's funny <laughs> you know i think he i think you know i think he's a well-meaning and good guy and i'm friends with with steve higgins his sidekick oh, right. okay. so uh, yeah. so i'm very happy for steve you know um that you know and it's bizarre to me that this guy i know is going to be ed mcmahon now you right know? isn't it but oh, that's cool but uh but you know so i like i think i'll like him better than jay you know the yeah. fact of the matter is i don't watch any of these shows very much anymore anyway mm-hmm. i watch john stewart or Sometimes Colbert nothing. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Colbert. Do you like Colbert? I do. I think he's he's a pretty brilliant guy. Yeah, no kidding. That's a hard thing to do. I'm glad you pointed out the uh, the sucking up the kiss at the Fallon. Yeah. I because I think he's talented. I think he's funny too. That but the not everything's as great as you're saying it is. Yeah. You're, these was, people sitting across from you, like, but you use the word transparent about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it, I, I have some sympathy for a, a little bit of that being that if you're constantly being asked about a topic that you may not even be all that interested. In. I mean, in, I mean, you come up with the uh, with that one answer to all topics, which is, hey, everything's going great, you know, kind of. I mean, the, that po- I mean, I can see. Uh, I don't know the guy, but I, I mean, I can see. I know what you're saying. I, you know, I, he's just over emphatic in his praise of people's work. Yeah, always, I guess that's know. true. That's yeah. the best thing ever. Yeah. You know, just that's everything true. is just like, you know. It could be uh, an episode of Saved by the Bell or right. Goodfellas. You yeah, know? The, there's where one of these things is not His like enthusiasm the other. always goes to 11. Yeah, okay. no matter which one, either yeah. one of those. All right, well, yeah. see, that's how little I know, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was the monument building? Slow. It's a slow process. <laughs> it's granite, for God's sake. Yeah. First, we have to grow the stone. That takes a long time. <laughs> the mountains must rise. Um, I, I, you know, there's a chance of a of a national concert event, comedy event. Uh, you, you did know. one before. You meant just about the one that we time. did. Uh, that was in Phoenix, and that was a great show. And uh, you know, Lewis Black has been really uh, somebody who's just anything I've asked him. He said, "Sure, I'm on board," and he was the name that drew the rest of that concert together and uh and uh you know talking about doing something big and doing doing top down national endowment stuff but it's you know it's something you have to it's, i don't know i mean on the, even weeks before the one in arizona the monument was dedicated if you'd asked me about it i still would again well we're almost you know i mean yeah so i believe things when i see them i can't believe that People used to send me, uh, find it online in some obscure way, send me $100, $25, never met me, don't know me, give me money after gigs, buy things after gigs, you know, stuff. And it's like, and I raised probably sixty or $80,000 that way early on. And I thought, this is insane that people would get, just give you money because you laid out some right. spiel this to them. before Kickstarter, too. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and which is also insane that people will, uh. you know, relatively insane. Right. Uh, Have you thought about that using Kickstarter? Well, you can. Um, Kickstarter is uh, Kickstarter is not for nonprofits. There is a nonprofit Kickstarter. To, a couple of them out there. Oh, but again, you know, it's the same thing. You got to have the list. If you have the list, those things will. Be, you know, if you have the six thousand people to send it out to to say, please Facebook about this and have people come and look at this project, and I'll I'll send you a mystery science theater T shirt. Uh, for a ten dollar contribution or something, you got the list. Yeah, you know, but but you're not going to drive traffic to it 
just based on being on it. So uh, what, here's what I found out. This is really simple. I, I was telling you this yesterday. Don't ask for small favors is a great expression that somebody taught me about nonprofits. And the other thing is that you could spend a lot of time putting together a Kickstarter campaign, or you can try to walk into the 12 richest guy in town's offices, get introductions, and him up for large contributions. Yeah. And I can and I conclude, and I needed every dollar. I needed every three dollar contribution, five dollar contribution, but I damn sure needed the, the couple of twenty five thousand dollar contributions sure. we got, and the Newman's Own Foundation and the comedy concert raised one hundred twenty five thousand. Social media stuff is great, but uh, you know. As an adjunct to companies that already have budgets, that's what a lot of that stuff's become. That's what the filmmaking ones become. Uh, you know, the the one that um, Spike uh, Spike Lee you, was you, you jumped into to help raise money for. Is that Indiegogo or? I think it. I think it probably is Indiegogo. Okay. There's a couple of them. So. Uh, well, the nice thing about so, Indi- the yeah. Indiegogo is better than Kickstarter for a lot of people because you get to keep whatever is pledged as opposed to Kickstarter, which you have to fully fund before you get your money. Oh, I think you can designate which way you want to do. Not on Kickstarter. But you can on Indiegogo. You can designate it as a, if we don't reach it, uh, yeah, yeah, you get your money back. Or you can designate it as straight ahead uh, nonprofit giving, which is, yeah. I learned something. I did not know that. You know, when last uh, time we did the podcast here with you guys, they were um, sort of joking about the monument and you're saying about how uh, having it in Spanish. Right? Does it sound familiar? Well, you know, uh, you, you live in the Southwest for a while. You realize it's 20 years from now, those people be the majority. I want them to know what my rights are. Yes, exactly. It's pretty simple. Yeah, it's a great line. Yeah. Now, uh, what do you think about that hubbub over that Coca-Cola Super Bowl commercial with uh, the uh, America the Beautiful and the different languages? We uh, we have the uh, Bill of Rights in uh, like something like uh, 17 languages on the website. We have from the start. We even have it in binary code up there. Because my web guy is a total geek and and showed me that uh, the Mac will speak binary code. It'll read a file in binary code. So we so you put up the Bill of Rights and press that thing and it reads and it starts going one zero 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 one one zero zero. Oh jeez, so <laughs> super. You know, people. You what do you have in binary code? And it's like, well, for the aliens. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's very nerdy. So uh, so I, obviously, I can, so I can imagine your opinion on the people that are saying that are. Up in arms, like how yeah. dare they? Yeah. Well, they are professionally up in arms. Those people. That's how they. That's how they get their fundraising. So you know they're doing the same thing Coke's trying to do. They're trying to make money. They're trying to start a social media conversation. Is what they're trying to do, and then get news items about how Twitter's up in arms about the new Coca Cola ad. You know, that's the, the the media always is making that mistake a lot now, where it's like using Twitter yeah. as yeah. as a barometer for what people are really talking about when it's really just like like 90 percent of it on twitter is just everyone wants to get their joke in on the topic you know Mm -hmm. so everyone has to ring in before the topic flushes through the system you know and is gone six hours later i was gonna say our attention span lasts yeah oh yeah so it's very short so i think it was smart on coca-cola's part to do the ad because you know for people like me it's like makes sense we're a fucking melting pot Mm -hmm. you know but of course it's gonna spark of course, you know, there's like... Yeah, they, it's any, not like any, they didn't know that was yeah, coming. Yeah, they had to know that that was going to be a debate, and they had to be craving the debate just to be buzzworthy, you know? Because so that's did, what you want from the Super Bowl spot. Did you, you want did people you, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, did can, you hear any like anything before leading up to that? Or, uh, the reason I asked that is because I know when I... Did, I purposely avoided any talk of the no you didn't hear about that ad surprise did you i didn't hear anything no about okay it, so then so when that, that one also, happened i mean did it pop into your head like oh people are gonna uh, think obviously. this is it's, yeah i mean it just kind of i saw it and went okay well you kind of know what's gonna happen here yeah, yeah. You know, there's gonna be jingoistic yahoos on there <laughs> going, you know, who's america learn english fuck you hashtag jingoistic yahoo right. the first time that word's been used on this show <laughs> love it and you know and then there's gonna be people who are like oh that's nice <laughs> you know, and then there's also that little thing of, and then there's going to be, well, that ad worked, right? For Coca Cola, they, yeah. they win either way, absolutely. But you know, they wanted to uh, teach the world to sing before, and right. they were probably but in English. Oh, did they? Was that an English only <laughs> yes. campaign? No wonder that didn't work. We speak American here. American. Yeah, right. American. By the way, in the monument business, uh, we now have the state of Oklahoma has uh, is going to do a Bill of Rights monument resolution. This is following their last legislative session where they uh, approved, in spite of everybody going, you're going to have a lot of legal bills because of this, 
they, they put the Ten Commandments up on the, on the grounds of the state capitol in Oklahoma. Okay. And the first thing that happened, like three weeks later, somebody realized that there were multiple misspellings on the tablet. So they had to correct the spellings. And then they got a oh, request. Oh, shit, not, a, <laughs> shit, not <laughs> commit adultery. <laughs> Now, shit, have no God before me. <laughs> um, and then the second thing they did, uh, uh, a group of Satanists said, well, then we want ours up there. You know, and and uh, that, of course, got a great Satanist. I mean, Satanist in a headline is always, you know, you don't see enough of those. And then, Oh, no, never. And then More. the uh, Hindu community wanted one up there. And that headline read, Monkey God Monument Proposed for Oklahoma State Capitol. So... You know, I, and really? I, yes, monkey God monument. Monkey God. I just, that, that just really cracked me up. So now they're going to, so now they're going to be proposing Bill of Rights monument and we will get zero press. Right. You know, except it ain't wait, monkey God. well, wait until they see the design though, because I'm going to put a monkey God. Right. I, I am. Each amendment flings its own poop. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see the uh, <clears throat> uh, someone, a, a high school junior, a young girl, is proposing? Uh, she's saying that uh, Disney needs a fat princess. Did you guys see this? I did not see that, yeah. but uh, because you know, young girls they can't relate necessarily. Because, you know, the whole body image of you sure. know, like Cinderella, uh, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White. Uh, there should be a fat princess. Well. I would say as soon as there's the a little heroine, mermaid has no legs. That's true. <laughs> I would Didn't say a handicap to relate to her. Right, exactly. They should also, oh, then they need a princess that's uh, addicted to uh, heroin, mm-hmm. like the supermodels. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, of course that of course someone would bring that up again. <laughs> you know, but it's like I, I you know. I, this is why we shouldn't take. Uh, we shouldn't listen to what seventeen-year-old girls. Come on, they have Shrek. I mean, they had Shrek. That was a. She was a fat princess when that's she true. turned in. That's exactly right. But that right. wasn't Disney. That was DreamWorks. Okay. Ah, see. All right. So they need to catch up. Apparently, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, that one. Just and she was cool. only fat when she was an ogre, I think, too. That's correct. But still, Cameron Diaz. Yeah. Wasn't that the voice of the... Yeah. Did you meet her on the set of Bad I did. Teacher? I question. did. I met her in that bar scene, yes. How's Cameron? Briefly. She was She was fine. I only met her briefly because she wasn't in... She was in the audience of watching the band, so they shot all the cameras facing that way earlier and then turned everything around to right. shoot our stuff. Is so. she strikingly beautiful? Yeah, better looking in person or not? Uh, she, she, she lives up to her... To her on-screen beauty in okay. person, I would say. Okay. There's no, there was no disappointment there, certainly. Yeah. Uh, so Josh Yes I sort of heard a little something about your health about a week ago And then kind of, and then did my own little research and didn't know Didn't really know I heard the word cancer last week leading up to this week's podcast I didn't know who or what Yeah And then yeah, sure I enough. just showed up today and uh, found out that it was you It was me um, What the I, hell are you doing getting cancer? I, you know, it's uh, He needs the material That's right, I needed a new chunk um, you know, it, uh, I was lucky cause I mean, first, cause the way it happened was first what happened was I had a ruptured colon, oh. which isn't the lucky that sounds part, lucky. <laughs> not the lucky part. <laughs> lucky I am you. so um, jealous. But, uh, <laughs> and so it's like in the hospital for like 10 days with that. And let's uh, go. This was like last, this is like October. October. Oh, October. Okay. Um, and it was, that knocked me on my ass completely. I lost like 40 pounds in six weeks and not and October. Just, um, but what happened was the lucky part was when they were doing a CAT scan on my colon, my kidney photobombed the CAT scan <laughs> and said, hey, I got a big tumor on I me. I got growth. Um, and, uh, it, and so, yeah, so that became immediately became the, uh, the next thing to deal with, which was uh, th- about three and a half weeks ago. I had my left kidney removed um, and we got it early. It was, you know, it was... It was a, uh, you know, contained completely the kidney, and I'm, I'm, you know, I have no further treatment I have to get or anything. So it's all, I am cancer free now. But congratulations, uh, that's awesome. Thank you. Man, it's holy a, crap, man. It's a weird thing because it's like you know the people talk. You know, you talk about fighting cancer. You know, I beat cancer. It's like 
I don't feel like I beat cancer. I lost an organ in the fight. <laughs> it's like I can't. I have to give something not, up for that. That's right. It's not like I can go a bunch more rounds. You know, <laughs> it's like you know, if I get tonsil cancer or appendix cancer, I can go with it. But I pretty much, you know, have gone through my uh, redundant <laughs> organs now, and. Uh, yeah. It's uh, maybe limbs. Yeah, I mean, and it was lucky that can't, it was fought, lucky that yeah. it was a kidney too, because you know you can live on one. You can you can actually live on half a kidney, um, and and if that doesn't work, it's like the only organ that's actually polite to ask people to give you one of too. So <laughs> you can't go asking for a lung, but you can. You know, I, I, I I look I, at my brother now, and he's like a, he just looks like a giant walking kidney to me now. <laughs> right, you know, he's like chili willy <laughs> drumstick, you know. Whenever I go to a family reunion, I always remind myself, you never know which one of those people is going to have matching bone marrow. Be good to them. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what I call family values. That's what you're talking about. That's right. So it's, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was quite a, a thing. So you were still working, obviously, uh, between October and then you said, like, you just wrapped up cinematic titanic yeah although i missed about five shows oh you did yeah i I was there for our final show but the five previous shows in november and october i had to miss did someone fill in for you yeah gruber dave gruber allen filled in who was our opening act for all the shows but he is on stage uh barely uh, one month after your surgery less than a month less than a month yeah ladies and gentlemen josh weinstein is a badass that's right kidding um, Do you have a cool scar now? I have several, yeah. Was it was laparoscopic say, surgery, so there's like three holes where they put in like the camera and the light and the the, and the, the hose act, to and inflate the me. Slate. Yeah. And then there's a they had to take the kidney out whole, so there is one larger incision. Um but it was laparoscopic so they didn't have to cut through the muscle or anything. So it was uh and uh And when was, I called him and said, How do you feel? he said, uh you said great, except that you felt like you'd been what, was it run over, hit with a base hit repeatedly with a baseball bat yeah that's beaten kinda, with a baseball bat that's kind of how it of how he all felt. like all over just, all yeah. over my left side yeah. yeah um so but honestly it wasn't as I mean the colon thing was worse the colon thing actually really put me down for a couple forty of months, pounds and you know I, yeah no kidding just, you know just complete muscle atrophy and you know all this shit and then. This kidney thing, it's just like I just had to deal with pain afterwards. But it was like I was literally out of the hospital in a day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, had Percocet. And, but I wasn't feeling sick afterwards. And I wasn't just bedridden. Pain. Just I just, pain. It was just pain, you know. So that I could handle. And I've been working. I'm trying to finish this documentary that I've been working on for now two years. That's, that should have been done in October. <laughs> but because of all the medical stuff is going to be done in February. Cancer in the, have you dealt with it in your family? Yeah, before, quite a bit, previously? actually. Yeah, both my parents died of cancer. They did. And, yeah. Both passed away. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and both of my parents uh, have had cancer. They're both still alive, thankfully. Survived. Thankfully. Uh, you know, uh, my mom, yeah, had skin cancer, like, on the t- top of her head. Wow. Boy, 25 years ago, yeah. probably. So now she just has a little bald spot where they had to like graft some skin from her thigh and the top of her head where they took it out yeah uh, yeah but she has naturally curly hair covers it up you can't even tell perfect and my dad had uh colon cancer a my, few years my back. parents went exactly the other way my R- dad my dad died of melanoma and my mom died of colon cancer Jesus. so what? i'm the lucky cancer guy in my <laughs> yeah, family i know i it just it does make you sit there and go which one am i gonna what what but Lottery in a way, number, I mean, am I getting it, it prepared picked? me too. I mean, I was like, you know, because it just, you know, I, I've been braced to hear I have cancer for many years, you know. So when it actually happened, I was kind of like, well, all right, yeah, I knew this was going to happen at some point. Yeah, I was also a heavy smoker, and you know, eats like sh- eat like shit, and you know, I can't say it was just God. He earned it, is what he's trying I, to say. You know, I can't. Were you still smoking up to? I luckily, uh, for, I don't know why it's lucky. It, it's just like this little <laughs> weird point of pride is that I did quit before I got the cancer diagnosis. By After about, the ten days by about in a the month, hospital. yeah. When I got out of the hospital, I was like. Well, you haven't smoked in ten days. This is your chance to get out now. You know uh-huh. this nicotine's out of your system. Just stop. You know, and so I did. And then about a month later, I found out about the cancer. And <laughs> oh my God. So now it's like you know I can't, I'm not going to go back. You can't talk about cancer and smoke. You know. No. You can choose one, I guess. Mm-hmm. But and it's very cool to have quit, like you said. You know, oh, you quit smoking? Uh, yeah, not because of the cancer. <laughs> First, yeah. yeah, like that would have felt like a weird, sli- you know, like a, cons- a defeat. That's almost, a pussy move. You know. That's a pussy move. Quitting because you got cancer. That's right. How much are a pack of smokes in California? Uh, one kidney. My God. It cost <laughs> one kidney. Wonderful. <laughs> 
I'm not going to try to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. At Cedar sinai Maybe they're cheaper elsewhere. Right. I don't know. Yeah, right. And for anyone who thinks Obamacare is bullshit, had I not had insurance, I would be hitting just about the $500,000 mark in I terms was of retail, ask, holy retail medicine between the two hospitals. Yeah, it, yeah being an entertainer, was there, there, obviously there's been times with no insurance, I'd imagine. Or? Well, the Writers Guild. I've had insurance through the Writers Guild for the last 20 years. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> I've, it's only because of America's Funniest Home Videos that I still have it. That's ironic. Because unlike MST, that does have residuals. And it plays in 80 countries. So. <laughs> what? Freaks and Geeks? America's Funniest Home oh, America's Videos. Funniest so. Videos. Yeah. And I wrote like 200 episodes of it. So Damn. That's why I've got uh, a long tail there. But like I told you, my daughter loves the show. I'm glad. So as long as they keep my Netflix... I'm happy. Uh, do they have any of the the uh, John Fugel saying and Daisy Fuentes shows? Or is yeah. Uh huh. Oh, do they? Yeah. That's good to know. Yes, I believe so. I think I saw my the girls watching that. Those are the ones that I was the head writer of. And yeah, then, I'm pretty uh, sure the Tom Bergeron ones. I was a consulting producer and writer on. So, uh, what, what was your health concerns there, Chris? Come on, don't feel uh, excluded here. Uh, none. <laughs> You know, just the standard good. tick, 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 tick. Yeah, just that. Just, <laughs> just the, the calendar. Time. <laughs> to me, it's just the calendar. Uh, that's about it. You know? Just know that I'm getting closer to death is good enough. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah I mean, uh, it is weird. And you and it starts even when you're in your 40s, when you see people, it, oh, people die at 52 and... You know, and you look and you feel like that's not that far. But a lot of people die when, pe- when a lot of people younger than you are showing up in the obits. A lot of people within two or three years. It's kind of like, well, well. Do you mind saying how did you? I mean, did how did you find out about Josh's health? Did he call you or somebody else? Or did you just find you out this have, morning? I, I called you. you uh, I called you when after you, I called you when I was in the hospital with the colon thing. Yeah. I think we were just in touch about it after that. Yeah, but there was a there was a small circle of friends there was probably about 10 people who knew it was going on because i didn't want to it was wh- fucking exhausting you didn't need yeah I, it, well part of it was that and I, I also did have sort of like this fear of like i didn't want like josh has cancer out in the world without people hearing the back end of the story i didn't want josh has cancer to be the last thing that people heard about me for a while yeah i wanted to hear he had cancer and he's fine you know, and so I just didn't want to put that mojo out in the world. So Have I you kind had, of wanted to wait until we stuck I knew with how the, it was resolved. We stuck with the exploding colon story because it was less <laughs> detrimental to <laughs> his career humor. prospects. Weirdly, not, like I didn't tweet about it. I normally, you know, I do tend to tweet about a lot of shit, but this was like, nah, it's, this is a little. Too. I'd say exploding colon is a lot of shit. Dum ching, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> tweet that. Did you have people, you know, coming out to you going, "Hey, uh, you know," like telling their maybe even. Uh, friends of yours that had a little secret cancer scare or anything? Uh, no, none of that, no. really. No. Mental well, illness? Did anybody tell you about their mental illness? I have, I have a lot of friends with really shitty lifestyles, but I don't think any of them have had cancer. <laughs> so you were the first. So you, were in the, you won I that pool. Always, yes. You're the leader. Mm-hmm. I, I like to do things young. I like to get them out of the way. No, I've been very... I, I, yeah, I, no cancer, no kids, don't need the material. That's what I was doing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Did you get pot subscri- uh, prescribed, pardon me? Um, I, I didn't just because I didn't need to because I could get it. <laughs> I could get it. <laughs> do you have one of those cards? Uh, I do not. Well, you just but have... uh, but uh, like everybody else, you still. But my it. wife does. I'll just say that. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, if it ain't in a film canister, I won't go near it. No, I still have a reliable dealer. So, and I didn't feel like I needed to put a paper trail behind my pot use as long as I could get it off the grid. Yeah. So, but mm-hmm. uh, it's cool that there are stores, you know. Just, I mean, just thinking back to when I was a teenager, and it's like, in the future, there'll be marijuana stores and porn will be piped into your home. It's like, what a country. I love this. <laughs> I can't wait to grow up. I'm, I'm so glad I'm not a teenager now. And, and people wonder why the unemployment's high. If I would have had the internet when I was a teenager, I would. I would have just only masturbated. That just that would have been my life. I and would've. that would have been different how? <laughs> <laughs> well, because he, uh, with the internet, he wouldn't have left the house, you know. That's right. So. Getting my, uh, it's mobile. The internet's mobile, if you haven't heard. You're right. That's right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Hey, uh, are you, uh, you guys uh, concerned about your water usage back are you concerned about I, your water I, I, usage I, I, back home I in California? Off, I turned off my sprinklers. Yeah? Yeah. I moved to an apartment just for water use. 
<laughs> just just to lo- just to lessen my carbon footprint. I do feel like a big dick having a lush green lawn during a uh, major drought, so we'll let it we'll let it go for a while. It did rain the day before I left, but not a lot. You know, uh, I just woke up the other day and went, you know what? It's about 85 degrees too warm here. <laughs> I have got to get the hell out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was thinking the other day that you, you, you did, we didn't just come to Minnesota in, in February. We came to the, a, a club in a basement in Minnesota. That's right. With stone walls. Heat's so. on. You guys, hey, you guys lucked out. Uh, a few weeks ago, we recorded the podcast. And uh, there were some heating issues. Yeah. So we had we recorded in the uh, back room here yeah. with that space heater going. Yeah. <laughs> yes. With the space heater, and we never took our jackets and gloves off. We yeah. Recorded an hour. Pie. Pete Lee was was in that week, and we recorded an hour in the green room, freezing. Yeah. So this could be much worse. But yeah, it's uh, quite a cold spell we're having here in uh, Minnesota. It's absolutely. We've been lucky all these other times. And this is the first time I've had weather like this in a decade, isn't it? Nah. I I don't know. It seems no? like a. It's not outlandish for Minnesota this weather. No, right that's now. true. But I think it's been a while. It seems like it's, it's lasting this... longer than. Uh, yeah, has usually in it's the past. more of a January thing. Than or you get one or thing. two, but not three or four, where there's like yeah, these we, weeks we, that are brutal. Yeah, no. This is the uh, this is the year of thirty thirty degrees feels like ninety degrees. Yeah. When, when you hit it for a day, right. and then it goes back to oh my god. 30s. Let's go walk around a lake. It's thirty. <laughs> exactly. It's time to wear shorts outside. Have you either you ever crossed paths with Philip Seymour Hoffman, our wonderful know, actor that OD'd this I week? I never did. I'm really I'm sad about his. Uh, I loved yeah, your too. tweet about him about the uh, tomato meter. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah, he uh, he added 25 uh, tomato meter points to any movie he was in. That's fantastic. It's RottenTomatoes.com. Oh, see, I don't know. Oh, yes. Movie review. Old man, look at my <laughs> life. I'm a lot like you. Yeah, I'm. I'm so disturbed that I didn't understand that particular reference. I mean, I sort of knew it must have something to do with something like that. I just wanted the specificity. Are you singing on stage? Uh, I am. Yeah, last night you did? I did, yeah. Are you... Uh, hey, don't give it all away. Is uh, are you juggling babies? There is no frontal You're nudity. juggling babies on stage Anchor still? babies. Only anchor babies. They're in this country illegally. I okay. do have a new musical bit this week. Though. You do? New to the show, yes. Oh, really? Yes, that's yes. true. I know we talked about last time. There was a there's sort of a there's a closer where you both are music. We have three we have three three conceivably three things in a row that could be considered finales closers. Really? Yes, it's a trinale. Trinale. <laughs> yeah. So no matter what happens in the actual text of our stand up, it all just goes away with the three finales anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it's a four course meal. That's right. That we're giving these people four courses of comedy. That's right. That's for Prefix, sure. baby. Yep. Can you recommend a wine with that? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do two shows on Friday. <laughs> I was waiting. I thought you might go into. I thought you might do the baby crying. Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. That was. What's weird is I don't do any impressions in my act. Really, I've been, no. I've been acting on this podcast as if I'm an impressionist all yeah, day. That's true. It's just not the case. Um, can you do Robert Mitchum for us old people? <laughs> <laughs> just to throw everybody off. What the the, de- the guy invented the deodorant? He that doesn't guy? kill her, Jolson. What <laughs> Yeah, but he only does it in black and white. I'm- that's hideous. Isn't that hideous? I, that always makes me think of some sort of, you know, <laughs> slasher movie thing where the baby, <laughs> you hear that voice and you turn around and this guy, baby just slashes you. A guy in a diaper with a knife <laughs> trotting around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crap dripping out. There's the something really sort of mechanically evil about that. <laughs> That's awful. Did you use that on, did you get to do a, uh, that sounds like an AFV uh, baby crying I might have used it at some point. I did a lot of voiceovers on when I was head writer on that show, so I'm, it might have happened. I don't remember it, but it's part of my tool chest. <laughs> so this, uh, Chris is thinking that one out there. Yeah, yeah. Do, uh, this is what t- I call it: bag of tricks because I'm old school. Bag of tricks. You and Felix the cat. He's got a tool chest. I got a bag of tricks. <laughs> this is like ten, eleven years—not uh, years, but. Uh, 
times it's, doing this it's together? Eleventh time, it's got to be at least nine years. You I think, think it's, it's ten? It's ten years because we started yeah. before my mom died and she died in uh, oh, wow in oh five. So. Um, mm. Going to keep doing it as I long as so, Lewis yeah. invites you back. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it gets better and better. It gets more and more interesting. There's more and more. I don't know how to put it. I don't want to say emotional content to the show, but I, there's more and more. It's a really personal experience. It's gotten more and more personal for us and for the audiences, and it, it's a it's a, it's interesting. It's fun. You really feel like you've gotten to know us somehow. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to too. I don't know I how think, to put you know, that. I but. think because of the safety net we provide each other, it it makes us both take bigger risks and do more interesting things. Because you know you're not. We're not going to lose the audience. We're, you know, one of, one of us is going to save the other guy if it looks like you're going to lose the audience, and then get him back. You know, so so there's always an added dimension to this show that's n- not necessarily in every show. But but you kind of after this week you go well, yes, we should always look for the opportunity for that kind of personal and honesty thing to be also an aspect of what the f- where the funny comes from. So right, yeah. But it's a uh, you know it's a it's it's fun for me I, it's, it's super fun, fun and it's and it's like i said it, it provides that that level of safety that allows us to be bolder performers really i mean josh more. walked out last night and he did uh i don't know somewhere between five and ten minutes for the very first time ever on on this cancer yeah okay and uh and uh you know just sort of funny and dark <laughs> like mr weinstein is over here and it was yeah. great so i mean so feeling willing to do that you know, and very, I mean, that's obviously, you know, usually it's tragedy is plus time, but if it's your tragedy, you can do it whenever the fuck you're ready. That's right. Well, I, you know, I think if Did I. Did you if, think it would happen this quickly that you would start talking about that? Oh, I've been. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been, oh, God. That's been, one reason he didn't cancel the. I've been the gnashing game. my teeth since. Is that right? Oh, yeah. No, since the second I was diagnosed, I was. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the gift of being a comic is that no matter what's happening in your life is you're, you're filtering it through two separate parts of your brain mm-hmm. you know there's always two two tracks going on in my brain there's the human you know <laughs> who's actually dealing with things and then there's the comic who's commenting on it you know that's the buddha brain and i think the detached comic i mean if i it's if i buddha. you know if i have any sort of if i were to write a self-help book or if i had any sort of underlying message to my sense of humor and view of life it's that Funny is always in the room. Mm-hmm. It's always in the room with you, no matter what horrible shit is going on. Funny is there too, you know. And so, if I can display that through how I process this cancer shit and this illness stuff, as, you know, and people, see, you know, can see that 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 really is how I view it. You yeah. know, is it's it's just as funny as it is serious. You know, and that neither undermines the other one. You know, it can be deadly serious and fucking hilarious at the same time do you ever get that uh like maybe you're married right yes that, does your wife ever go why why this isn't funny why are no. you making jokes about no, this she, no she like, never does and i th- and she i mean i grew up in a house where a good joke was never inappropriate great you know a bad joke was <laughs> and a bad joke could get you in trouble and hack material could yeah. get you grounded right i mean the the bar was kind of high but a good joke was never inappropriate in my family. That's you great. Know? And so, and that, and my parents were absolutely true to that all the way up to their dying breath. That yeah. there was, there were jokes in there. There was, there was, we were appreciating the absurdity along with the tragedy. Yeah. You know? And I grew up with no, with no internal censor whatsoever. I mean, I grew up in Washington, D.C., and my father had some political ambitions that were never quite realized about being a bit of a player in the Republican Party. And, and uh, but by the time I was like eight years old, they were going, well, he's not going to be in the diplomatic corps because <laughs> uh, I would blurt. So that, I think that's also, uh, you know, I mean, if you have the blurting tendency and uh-huh. then and then you there is sense and then you realize, oh, if I just attach a sense of humor to this, it won't be nearly as bad. <laughs> right. And my wife is total. I mean, her her dark sense of humor has absolutely developed over the course of our marriage so she's she's good too you mm. know so she then and, and we are, and there are jokes that we can tell only each other because oh, we know yeah. each other will forget you know forgive the the horribleness yeah. sure. of, of, of what's you know being expressed uh-huh. there but uh-huh. well, that's uh, good. you've you always been, that. you've always been great at that <laughs> When we were writing the, uh, my, our one man show together, uh, which was basically about a, a, a period in my life and a relationship, my relationship with my brother, but it just in the course of shaking it out, you know, it's I, I don't know whether I, I was being interviewed or interrogated by Josh about my life, but I mean we talk about it, and uh, 
we would come up with the absolute cruelest interpretations of the stupidity of the things. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. I can't. I'm trying to remember a couple of them. The a uh, couple of the uh, ones about the juggling were just way too funny. Uh. And uh, so his he's very funny when he's cruel. <laughs> I want to get. You know. Let's do a quick update on the. Uh, you mentioned it briefly the uh, documentary. Yes, that's right. On. I am. Uh, it's hope- about a musician. It is about a uh, rock singer and actor named Michael DeBar. Yeah. Um, whose career has been fifty plus years in in show business. You know, ranging from being one of the kids in the movie to Sir with Love to being the front man for the Power Station at Live Aid and being like Led Zeppelin's darling on their label and also being a guest on the Rockford Files and WKRP along the way all the way up through like you know CSI and NCIS guest spots now and, yeah um, plus he married uh, Pamela de Barr who is uh, the groupie who wrote the the book I'm with the band um, you know who's in the Zappa's band the GTOs oh, okay. and uh I- you know, she dated she dated Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix and Jagger, and you know has has was one of the original you know known groupies. And she's still around. She's still around, and they were married for many years. Um, and so, yeah, really interesting story about a really interesting guy. Plus, he was born a uh, a marquis. He had French nobility title that, and you know, and yet his father was a derelict junkie who was you know the previous marquee who had spent the estate's money and oh, wow. his mother was a 17 year old schizophrenic showgirl and then because of the nobility he, he, he went from being raised by strippers till he was eight to being thrown into british boarding schools and you know upper crust boarding Wild. schools and so it's just been this this life of this guy who's basically just built a life around his vibe kind of you know Who's also a really talented singer and a uh-huh. good actor, but mostly he's just like a really interesting cat. So you still have some work to do on that? Just just uh, cosmetic work. The, I mean, the story is told. Mm-hmm. You know? Plus, there's a lot. There's lots of great people. There's uh, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols and Don Johnson and Gabriel Byrne and uh, um, um, from uh, John Taylor from Duran Duran and uh-huh. uh, and Ed Bigley Jr. and you know, <laughs> so a lot of you know a lot of interesting people talking about Michael and. Uh, so yeah, it's been a great it's been a great project. It's been about two years of my life though, and yeah. I'm ready to be done with it and go off to festivals and have it seen. But what else coming up this year? Um, well, I might be doing another documentary, which I'm not quite ready to talk about not, yet. He's not. Uh, you cannot disclose yet. Right? Okay, the um, liberty to. Uh, but I'm talking about uh, uh, doing another documentary, which I would mostly shoot like in September. Um, and then you know I'm going to probably do more stand up. I'm going to try to sort of concentrate on doing more stand up this year and uh, How much stand up would you like to do? I mean, you know, if there were good if there were good venues all the time, like if every club was Acme, I'd do it every week, you know. Yeah, really? Um, <laughs> yeah. That's true. You know, but I'd like to, I'd like to make it a much bigger part of my life than it's been over the last several years cuz I still when I look in the mirror, I still see a comic, you know, mm-hmm. no matter how much writing or directing or whatever I do. I, I I identify myself as a comic to myself. And I'm going back to my roots. I'm actually going to do a uh, uh, series of juggling, uh, losing, how to lose weight by juggling videos. <laughs> because I think it's, uh, you know, it's YouTube friendly. Absolutely. And, Clown uh, size. Yes, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I had to, I, I needed a name for it. So I like that clowner size. And now I know how to, exactly how to dress it up too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it sort of suggests an art Will direction. you please dress like the uh, gals that did, you know... Well, like it'll be the, a clown, well, but it'll be halter top because people have to see how the abs firm up over the time. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I want right. to be, I gotta actually see the results. Uh-huh. So, and leg warmers, size. please. We're, we're leg warmers. For sure. Yeah. But in clown colors, however. Yeah, and the stripes. Still, still the floppy shoes. <laughs> still, maybe even. <laughs> Gotta go the for Nike the floppy Air shoes. Nike Air Bozos. <laughs> see? Boom! God, I'm just like a fucking machine here. You are a machine. <laughs> Clowner size with the Nike Air Bozos, you know. Uh-huh. So you're already getting me endorsement deals. That's right. This. So I think it's going to be, you know, as big as The Biggest Loser. I do. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, or associated with the phrase Biggest Loser in some matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, I think non-starter, <laughs> a career non-starter, <laughs> biggest non-starter, bench. <laughs> that's that's a benchmark too. Mm-hmm. 
So, where can uh, you're awesome on Twitter? Oh, oh thank gosh, you. Freaking hilarious. At J. Elvis Weinstein. That's why go. I don't do Twitter. I can't compete, but I can't go against that. I say, <laughs> well, I, you I, have I look account, at Josh's but feet. you never use it. I know. No. Yeah. It's, uh, grandpa. What is it? I, I am Chris Bliss? Or yeah. This was Chris Bliss? <laughs> you know, I, I, I will go What the go happened to Chris Bliss? I yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will, I will, uh, uh, yeah, to Chris who? <laughs> what the fuck happened to Chris who? Uh, I will go in little spurts. I understand the attraction of it. Um, but I just get pulled off of it and other things, and it's just you know. And I would like, and I, it's a great medium. I mean, Josh is great on it. Andy Kindler's fantastic, fun on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know people that are good at all those, all that, all the social media. Uh, there's a there's a writer, a senior editor for Slate named Dahlia Lithwick has the best Facebook page of anybody I've ever seen in terms of just all this content about. Uh, news stories and particularly uh, courts and legal. I mean, it's but it's really interesting and her perspectives. I mean, you know, so there are people know how to use that media. Yeah, it's and big, you're you're really well. Yeah. Speaking of Andy Kindler, by the way, uh, I, I do want to oh, plug. Yes, uh, yes, I want to yes. plug uh, Kids do. Court on uh, YouTube. It's called Kids Court with Andy Kids Kindler. Kids Court. Uh, and I play the uh, puppet bailiff in that uh, Bernie the bailiff. Uh, and there's uh, four episodes up on YouTube, and hopefully we'll do more through. It's, uh, it was funded by Nerdist. Yeah, I, you're on all of them. I love. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, okay. I love this idea. It's perfect for Kindler. It's great for Kindler. It's a great Andy Kindler vehicle. And even I talked to Andy about it, and he was like, "This is the this is the thing I've done that makes me laugh the most of anything I've really? ever done." Yeah, so awesome. It's really it's great to watch. If you're an Andy Kindler fan, it's really it's Kindler at his best because yeah. it's just. The kids are basically props on the show, you know, for Kindler to do his thing. And yet he has the humanity to pull it off. He actually does. He does. Yeah, that's the, whole, that's the quality that he has that's as, great. As cruel in any way to these kids. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been meaning to watch them. I see them posted here and there, and I never get around to it. Yeah, them. please watch it. Um, I will put them on the No oh, Laugh that's Track great. Facebook page. Cool. There you go. So people can see them. Oh, yeah, I got to start posting them, too, then. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Hey, well, thanks. Go. I'm going to let you go. Do what you need Are you going to tweet about this after? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll probably retweet his tweet that it says, I had a great time talking to I am Chris That's Bliss. Good. I like that. Hey, I'll retweet that. Today. Okay. Or I'll should. retweet, or I'll retweet your tweet of his, okay. your retweet of his. So that's old why I can't man, do it. I can't even say it. Old man, oh, come on. You know, there's plenty of reasons to be indifferent to that. <laughs> I, there is, I, I just not ignorant. <laughs> yeah. I understand it. I just don't uh, understand it. What's Rotten Tomatoes? Guys, thank you. What is it? I, what, what I knew is it was it? a website related to movies. I just didn't know exactly what the Rotten Tomatoes were. What is it? It's it. Yeah. Oh, there's evil spirits. It's a Minnesota-based grocery store. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. Man, I'm telling you what. Josh. I will outlive yes. both you motherfuckers. Okay? <laughs> probably will. I'm already one That's kidney right. down. There you go. Yeah, you're already handicapping me a kidney, That's aren't right. you? I'll spot you an organ. <laughs> spot you a kidney. Four skin 20 years a, younger, I'll, I'll spot, spot you a, a kidney. foreskin and a kidney. <laughs> hey, I'm afraid you haven't spotted me that foreskin. I didn't want to know. Oh, there, you, there you do. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Thank Continued you. Continued success. We'll see you. We'll do this again in a year, hopefully. Fantastic. When you come back, and uh, you'll continue to be cancer-free, and hopefully we all will. I will do my damnedest. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you.